Hello everybody, good day to you. Welcome back. We have over here a 2012 Doge Ram four-wheel drive 5.7 liter Hemi 1500 V8. It's a very pretty truck. Thank you. <laughs> Customer states in four-wheel drive while driving in the sand, he hears an odd buzzing noise somewhere from the drivetrain. Now, this is going to be somewhat difficult to recreate because I don't really have any sand around here. Odd type of a, a complaint at 67, sorry, 167,463 miles on the odometer. So what we're going to do real quick, we're going to take it out on the road just in too high. I'm going to drive it around some, listen for any noises that I may or may not hear. Uh, then we'll try it in four-wheel drive. And if we can't hear anything in four-wheel drive, uh, I'll go ahead and put it on the rack. We'll visually inspect it from underneath. And then if that fails, um, I'll go hunt down some sand and drive it through some sand to uh, recreate the customer's condition in which the concern is present. So stay tuned because this is going to be a very good Doge video. Happening Z Hood. All right, let's get this thing in the forward gear position. Hit the road a little bit. Are you gonna go? There we go. We're rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep that gate wheel rolling. Uh, I think what I'll do is make my normal test drive around the block, up and over the bridge, and then back around the corner. We'll start with that one and uh, see if anything happens with this uh, this noise situation here. Sounds good. It's got the Doge fire in order. Okay, so my first observation, besides the presence of this cop car right here, is that uh, I hear from these oversized uh, mud tires uh, some vibe, or I feel some vibe and I hear some noise, but that's fairly normal for the equipment that we're running. So I do not believe that the tires are the cause of the complaint. I hope it's not the tires. Because if it's the tires, then I'm on a wild goose chase and that would that would kind of bother me. However, I don't think it's the tires because the complaint states that it does it in the sand. And I don't think that tires make noise in the sand. Let's get it up to speed here. I feel like I'm in the movie Twister driving this red Doge. It sounds the same as the mid-90s Dodges did. hearing any kind of weird vibe out of it. Nothing yet. Uh-oh, collision. Collision. Watch out. Or a picnic. Oh, good. The green light is ready for me. Yo, guy. Green light. I hate to honk at people. Bro. Come on, man. Seriously? Oh, look, we still don't get to go. We are last. Hmm. All right, so unfortunately, going over those railroad tracks right behind me, I did feel like a clunking noise that was occurring. Um, it sounded like it was uh, steering column related, but I heard it in this general area, maybe down low. Uh, that may or may not have been it. Uh, again, I was going over railroad tracks, but I, I did feel like I heard the intermediate shaft and the column clunk, but I don't think that that's, that's the issue here. We'll see. Alrighty, so my gravel asphalt parking lot is the closest thing that I have to some sand. So what I'm gonna do is click that into neutral, and we're gonna put this thing in four low, wait for it to engage, and I'll just operate right here to see if I can't make, a, make that sound begin sounding. Indicator says we're in four low. Back and drive. Let's see what happens here. Hmm. I don't hear anything. That's a negative. Reverse. Backing up. Beep, 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 beep. I don't hear anything in reverse. Let's try to turn. Let's do a full lock turn to the left, some throttle. Negative, no sound there. Backing up. Hello, concrete guys. 
granite guys. They're actually not concrete guys, they're tile countertop guys and granite guys. Home decor, there we go. Yeah, he's waiting on me. Alrighty, I have heard nothing yet. I'm gonna go ahead, put this thing back in two wheel drive. We're gonna put it on the lift. We're gonna rack it up. I'm gonna do a visual inspection of the underneath carriage. Uh, if I can't turn up anything visually, I'll restart the engine, put it back in gear, and we will turn the drivetrain with the vehicle suspended. And perhaps I can listen uh, at that point to see if I hear any abnormal noises. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. All right, getting her nosed in here. Let's get her set up on the rack. We'll lift it up and uh, visually inspect the underneath carriage and see what we can't come up with here. I think we're right about on the money. CG is right here, that's center of gravity. It's kind of a long truck. I'd say right there is good. All right, parking the auto, powering down. Pew. Okay, I've done a couple walk arounds. We have the rack set up front. It's set in the back. I've got it slightly off the ground. Now, this is a lifted truck. It's got a, a big like six inch spacer, spacer type of lift kit on it. Uh, that has sort of helped me get this thing racked up because this rack doesn't extend enough to reach the frame rails in order to clear the, uh, the running board here. So because of this extension, I'm able to get the, uh, the lift arms uh, on the suspension. So that being said, we can uh, black subscribe this thing, get it up in the air and commence with our visual inspection. Make sure we're safe. Not really, that's uh, too far forward. Coming back down, I don't like this. More adjustments are necessary. This thing has been very hard to rack up due to its uh, lifted nature. Let's see here. We'll pull that pin. That's the one that locks these arms from sliding left and right. Swing that in some, just like so. There we go, let's try that one. Trying again. That's why we triple check and then double check after that. How we doing? That's more better. -er. Rear looks good. Let's recheck them since it uh, it came off the lift. That's, that's pretty close. Hmm. Here, I know. We'll come off the rack one more time and then roll it forward. Yeah, we need to roll it forward some. Right about like there. That should be good. All right, here's a good safety example. See that? I just had that right where it should have been, but because I let the car down, it managed to roll back some, and then uh, it moved that out of alignment. Now, that's very, very dangerous, because if you don't go back and recheck on that, you could potentially pick this thing up and not notice until you're uh, up in the air and in the danger zone. Okay, this situation has been remedied. We got a good footprint on both the rears, good footprint on both the fronts. Now we can take her up safely. Okay, let's roll ourselves down here. We're gonna work back to front and we're just gonna visually inspect everything. We're looking for anything loose, misaligned, falling off, anything that's hitting other components, torn bushings, things of that nature, loose bolts, uh, you name it, anything could be causing this random noise. Uh, we have yet to create it or recreate it, but I, I do believe it's there. I've seen a video. So let's see, rear sway bar hardware looks okay. Let's give it a shake real quick. Yeah, that seems to be all right. Sway bar bushings, those are okay. Stabilizer link, that feels pretty good. It's solid, solid. Okay, that's all right. All right, nothing standing out to me back here. Let's move to the front side of this axle and see what we've got going on over there. Yeah, that's safe, no worries, we're good. Okay, that's tight. I don't see any evidence of this little uh, lift bracket moving around against the shackle. That looks okay. This scrubbing action right here is from these uh, brake line, or brake cables running into it, that's not the noise. Uh, let's check, let's check some U-joints. Maybe we have a U-joint noise. Don't see anything here just yet. Pry bar, need pry bar. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is try to put some side load on these bearings here, or uh, U-joints rather. There are bearings in the U-joint. 
but I'm looking for some motion. Any kind of play or something loose, uh, I don't think we're gonna get that out of this rear U joint. Let's check uh, the front one up here real quick. It's a little darker in this area. Side load being applied, no movement there. Now these could be binding. It's very possible that it's got a U joint that's binding. So there's not slop in it, but it doesn't want to turn freely. And it, when it's in certain parts of its rotation at a certain speed and frequency, that can cause a vibration, it's possible. Um, since the guy mentioned that they drive through sand with this when it does go off-road, uh, there's a good possibility sand got into one of these universal joints and has, uh, has damaged it. It's doable, or possible. That one's not moving either. All right, so no weird abnormal play. Let's try to rotate this some. It feels okay, but again, there's not much motion out of it because this is a fairly straight line, so that universal joint really doesn't get to, uh, to move much. I may unbolt this and uh, check this thing by hand later on. Uh, let's continue with the visual inspection first. We seem to have moved on to the front axle. Let's see, we've got, there's some damage here from the steering knuckle hitting the lower control arm during turns. That's a byproduct of a lift kit. There's nothing to be done about that. That's the, uh, that's the lock stop uh, for the steering. And uh, again, since it's been lifted, uh, steering has a little bit more motion in it and it's allowing things to contact uh, that normally wouldn't contact. Yeah, we can see more of it over here on this side. So it's a possibility that uh, maybe while turning full lock and going over some terrain, this thing moving around is causing uh, causing some kind of noise. That's that's possible. Looking in that hole there, we could use some brakes in the future. See that? Yeah, friction material is getting a little low, about five thirty seconds of an inch. But that's not our concern. Let's see. This stuff all looks like it's tight. I should probably check this just to make sure that the lift kit itself is installed and in good condition. That looks tight. I don't see where anything's been moving around. Let's go around to the front of the front axle. I'm gonna take a peek over here. Tight squeeze, look at that. I'm glad I took those shelves out over here because had I not, then, uh, well, we wouldn't be able to be here right now. Well, here we got something. That's uh, that sway bar bushing's a little worn out. See the gap in there? That gap really shouldn't be there. It's not horrible. I doubt it's causing the noise, but it's worth noting. Same thing on these sway bar bushings here. They're, they're pretty smashed in. Uh, not gonna cause the noise, or probably not gonna cause the noise. It's possible, but uh, we just don't know. Um, do, 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 do. I don't see much going on on that side. Similar situation with this bushing, a little bit of wear. Same thing with that bushing, a little bit of wear. Again, not horrible and probably not the noise that we were describing, but uh, that's gonna go on the list of recommendations. Let's see, control arm bushings. How are these guys looking? Let's see if they can't get some pry action in here. It's uh, no motion on the front. Let's check that rear one, ah, negative. No motion on that. Let's rotate. Let me go back around to the back side for a better view. Let's take a look at the CV axles on this front. Do we hear anything? I heard like a click. Yeah, I just hear gears moving around inside of that differential. I don't think that, that that's the issue either. Let's check this CV for some excessive play. Hmm. That's not really, not horrible either. A little bit of motion, but nothing crazy. Check, uh, check this side over here. That's a little more motion than I would expect actually okay so I'm prying uh, with the pry bar on the axle shaft in order to generate some motion right here in this inner uh, inner joint and what we can see there's an output shaft coming from the differential which slips into a splined bore inside of this uh, section 
of the axle and we can see there's a lot of motion in that. All right, so in order to uh, be uh, comprehensive on this inspection, like I said earlier, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this front drive shaft. It's just got four bolts that kind of hold her in and they're tight bolts too. Become unclicked. Come on now. It's coming out. That's some crustiness going on in there. You see that? Come out. Let's uh, let get these other three out. What I'm gonna do is just disconnect this and I'm gonna move this yoke right here by hand and I'm gonna feel if it's binding or not. There we go. Halfway out. These bolts do not want to come out. Come on, you. Oh, seriously? Got it. Hit me in the foot. Ooh, didn't expect that to be there. Must be a spacer due to the uh, presence of the lift kit. Let's see how this thing feels. Uh-huh. We got a problem with this U-joint. See that clicky business right there? And then up and down, more clicky business. So this drive shaft has not had enough articulation inside of it to maintain a smooth wear pattern. It's got dead spots. Watch, see that? It naturally wants to hang out in that position, which means there is some wear inside of this U-joint. I'm also gonna recommend rebuilding this uh, front drive shaft. That's probably our problem more than anything else that we found. I believe this right here is, uh, is gonna be the issue with this truck. Let's get a little closer and see if we can't see this in greater detail. It should want to like spring back. If I get it just right, see how it kind of favors. Yeah. Well, I can feel it. You guys can't feel it, unfortunately, because you're inside of the camera, but uh, we definitely have some wear inside of this Universal right here. And well, this is interesting. I don't think this U-joint is replaceable. You see how these cups are staked in? There's like no clip inside of here or no snap ring. Yep, no snap rings. I don't think this Universal is uh, is serviceable. We may have to replace the drive shaft. Yeah, I can't get those guys out. Not with those stakes in there. Nope, nope, nope. All right, let me go uh, see if I can't source the drive shaft to go along with the other drive shafts to go along with the steering or suspension stabilizer bar stuff. And then uh, we'll go from there. All righty, I believe we have seen enough of this uh, front drive shaft, so I'm gonna put this thing back on considering that we've uh, rendered the vehicle inoperative and it's not gonna sit here until we get approval. So I'm gonna put this back together. Let's see how this is gonna work. Let's get it all lined up like these. Uh, these bolts don't really turn that freely. Where's my gun? Give that back to me. What is this? That's not okay. Whoa, I almost fell out of my chair. Falling back. Okay, let's get another bolt in so this thing's not running all sideways like. Spin that around. That did not thread like I thought. There. Get this one in. Come on. Okay, that one's threaded. Good. Let's apply some torquage. Get this thing back on. Clickage. This gun's kind of hard to control. I, I think I'm gonna try to locate the uh, the less powerful version. 
because this rigid is a beast. My non-octane was a little easier to manipulate. This one's heavier and bulky, but it's got boatloads more power. Okay, drive shaft is in. Let's get out from under here. I'm gonna go and uh, work up this estimate for uh, all these components, and uh, we'll see what we're gonna do with it. All right, back around to our lift controls here. Let's get this thing off the lock. We're gonna let her down, and uh, real quick, uh, while it's still on the rack, I'm gonna get a pry bar uh, under these front wheels, and I'm just gonna check out the ball joints. If this thing has enough wear on it to uh, cause a U-joint to fail, then it's probably got enough wear on it to cause a ball joint to fail. I'm gonna check that real fast too while we're, uh, while we're going through all this. So what we're gonna need is, not that drawer, this one, more pry bar. Let's get the curvy one. So as it sits, the front suspension is unloaded, meaning the uh, control arms are bearing no weight of the vehicle. And if there is play in these ball joints, I should be able to feel it as I pick up on this thing. Let me, uh, let's crawl down below here and take a look at it. As I pry on it, we can see if there's any motion in these uh, lower balls. And the survey says that's a negative. Those ball joints look good. That one didn't move. Let's uh, let's try to check for a little bit of play in this upper. If we can get some leverage on it. Hmm. No, no motion in that upper. Okay, I think that side's good. Real quick check on the uh, driver side, and our evaluation uh, will be complete. Let's see if I can't feel anything out of this one. Prying up on it. If there is play, you'll feel it bump. You'll feel that. Uh, those ball joints moving around and they'll have like a steady clunk to them. Check this one here. Nothing there. Let's try some down play. Down pressure on it. Nope, I don't see anything happening with that upper. So that's in good shape. I, I think we're good. I'm about 90% sure we, uh, we found the cause. Uh, like I said, I, I need to go work this up and uh, bounce this off the owner, and we'll see what we're gonna do. Coach, coming down. Suspension articulation. Oakley Dokley do. I have created an estimate. It's been submitted raw for approval. I need to climb up into this building here. It's been sent off and submitted for approval. That's going to take uh, a slight amount of extra time because there is an aftermarket warranty company involved here. So we've got to go through their process of approval. Um, so that being said, I, I know for a fact that I'm not going to get an answer uh, on this car. I, I would expect to be able to get one because the warranty company uh, has been dealing with this situation with this truck uh, for quite, uh, quite a long amount of time. The problem is, is after like two dealerships, and like two or three or four or whatever, I forget the exact number, but after multiple attempts from uh, other facilities to attempt any kind of diagnosis, uh, nobody's been able to come up with, uh, with a viable suggestion or solution uh, for this vibration issue. Now, I do recognize that I was not able to recreate, that's pretty close. I wasn't able to recreate the vibration, but based on the video that I saw and the customer's description, uh, when the symptom takes place, combined with what we found down below, especially that drive shaft uh, U-joint, uh, I do believe that I'm onto something here. So we're gonna go with what we have found out so far. We got a, a couple worn suspension parts. Um, I don't think the sway bar links were the cause of the noise. I'm, I'm like 99% sure that the noise is either caused by that CV axle or the U-joint in the drive shaft, or it could have been both. Um, either way, I have found faults in two of those components and I'm gonna recommend that uh, we replace at least that right front CV axle, and uh, we replace the uh, the U-joint or the front output shaft, drive shaft. That's the one that goes from the transfer case behind the transmission uh, forward up to the front differential. Anyways, I will consider this a successful diagnosis. We have a plan to move forward with. Uh, I've got viable and decent recommendations, 
and even if what I found is not actually the exact cause of the vibration, we still found faults uh, in the vehicle, which is something we can pursue uh, with regarding uh, future repairs. Uh, all that being said, I'm gonna have to save those future repairs for after we get an approval so we can expect a, a part due uh, on this particular uh, Doge Ram 1500 5.7. However, at this time we are dead in the water and I will not be able to move forward with any, uh, any repairs at this exact time. So that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out right about now, powering down. As always, like thank you guys for watching this video. I certainly hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, you know the drill. Please feel free to let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. Drop me a comment or two while you're down there. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later in a video, in a doge, in a day, in a diagnosis.